If I told you this little plastic box that looks like it could be a character from WALL-E is capable of brewing proper espresso at 6 to 9 bars of pressure, then would you believe me? Well, let's talk about that. Always full transparency, we were gifted this product in exchange for sharing our honest thoughts, which is exactly what we'll be doing in this video. No money exchange hands and Unitera who make the Nomad don't get to watch this before any of you do. We'd also like to thank Brian Kwan for putting us in touch with Unitera. He also happens to have a YouTube channel with some great content, so definitely check that out. The link is in the description below. A big thank you to Benki Brewing Tools for making it so much easier for us to receive these products to test and review for all of you. And lastly, if you enjoy the content that we create, then please like and subscribe. It just takes a second, but makes a huge difference to us. While this may be the first time some of you are seeing this brewer, it has been around for a while. The Unitera Nomad was Kickstarter funded in 2013 and then later launched in 2014 at the SEA annual event in Seattle. But it's only now gaining some real traction. So we're super excited to have gotten our hands on one to test and review. So let's get into it and talk about this quirky little espresso machine. Okay, let's start with aesthetics. The Nomad is arguably the most unique looking espresso machine out there. If you were seeing it for the first time, it's unlikely you'd know what it was, even if you were an espresso aficionado. As a designer, I'd be curious to know what the inspiration behind this form is. To me, it almost looks like a scaled down model of a building that was designed around the principles of deconstructivism, a movement of postmodern architecture that appeared in the 1980s. These buildings broke a lot of rules and were characterized by the absence of obvious symmetry, harmony, and continuity all of which can be observed here. And if you can tell by my excitement, I absolutely love how this thing looks. It's so cool and just a bit crazy in the best possible way. But we'll talk about how the form affects functionality a little later on. It comes in a few different colors, but the white is by far our favorite. And it also feels really well built in spite of being almost fully plastic. It has a nice heft to it and all the key parts that are exposed to stress and wear are all made of metal, namely the lever, shower screen, portafilter basket, and this latch that locks the portafilter in. The only thing that feels a bit flimsy is the pressure gauge, which moves around with the locking mechanism and also is exposed. Yep, it has no cover, and this brings up concerns of water damage and dust settling over time, so we'll just have to see how it holds up. And lastly, you get this beautiful all-metal tamper. We just wish the fit was a tad more snug because we always have some ground stuck on the walls after we tamp. So that covers aesthetics. Let's talk about functionality now. Is this miniature architecture model capable of busting out some baller shots of espresso? Or is this a classic case of function lagging far behind form? I mean, it does have its flaws, some minor and others pretty significant. But if you bought the Nomad expecting great espresso, then this thing absolutely delivers. And then some. And it does this while being super fun to use. But let's break down the experience of brewing with the Nomad and talk about what's good and what's not. We'll start with the good, or I should probably say great, because the actual experience of pulling a shot with the Nomad is fantastic. The seesaw lever requires way less effort than any of the direct lever machines. The lever itself has a very satisfying resistance and weight to it. In fact, it's hard to resist the urge to play with it even if you don't plan to brew. It's easy and intuitive to modulate the speed to maintain the pressure that you want, and the extensions make it very comfortable to grip and use. One thing you'll notice if you pay attention is how good the overall tactile experience is. This is often overlooked or experienced more subconsciously, but is so important for products that we physically interact with every day. It just feels great to touch and use. The glossy plastic parts are all nicely rounded and smooth to the touch, with your hand rarely encountering anything sharp or unpleasant. The parts that need to feel grippy are textured, like the powder-coated metal on the lever and the latch, or the rough plastic on the tank lid. Speaking about the tank, this is the other thing that makes the Nomad so unique. It has a whopping 300 ml capacity, and because it's plastic, which is a great thermal insulator, you get very good temperature stability. This is clutch when it comes to brewing espresso. You can easily pull back-to-back -back shots without having to refill, but we highly recommend you get an extra tray if you plan to do this often. That way, you can prep two baskets and then just swap out trays once you're done with the first shot and continue seesawing for the second shot. This large tank capacity combined with the seesaw design of the lever mean that you can now pull long shots. So you can actually try profiles like the Allonger, which is a one is to five ratio, 
or sprovers, which can go up to 1 is to 12 or 1 is to 14. Just be aware that these require much higher flow rates and it's not something that the Nomad was designed to handle. You won't damage anything, but you will most certainly make a big mess. If you look at how this thing works, the coffee brews into this gray tray, which then drains it out through a small hole. Now, if your flow rate increases over, say, 4 grams per second, then this thing is filling faster than it's able to drain the liquid out and subsequently overflows. So just don't go into a seesawing frenzy. Hopefully, Uniterra will design a high flow tray as an optional accessory sometime in the near future. Moving on, you also get this crema valve, which essentially converts the basket to a pressurized one. So if you own a grinder that can't quite go down to espresso fine or you buy pre-ground coffee, you can still play with the Nomad and pull drinkable shots. Another thing to note is that there's no way to look at the bottom of the basket to evaluate your extractions. Now, if you know how nerdy we are, this may come as a surprise to you, but we're actually okay with this. It keeps the brewing experience fun and light without getting overly technical, and it also forces you to use your palate. Now, coming back to the form, while we love how this thing looks, it does create a few problems for itself from a functionality standpoint. First up, the exit point for the espresso is rather awkward. Both the clearance and the angle make it very difficult to get most any cup under it, so you can forget about using scales. There is a simple fix though, you can plonk it on a book or two, but you shouldn't have to. The other one is portability. Both the name and all of the marketing clearly point towards a travel-focused brewer, and while this is absolutely capable of brewing delicious espresso on the go, it isn't particularly easy to pack away. The unconventional and asymmetric form, while sort of compact, definitely take up a lot of volume. And the last thing we'd like to talk about with respect to functionality is cleanup which is our biggest gripe with this little brewer. It has a lot of parts and it's near impossible removing this tray after brewing without having water and coffee drip everywhere. I mean, you can pump the tank dry, but this is a bit wasteful unless you've used only enough water to pull your shot, but it still takes a bit of time. Even the brew chamber can have stray grounds and coffee that builds up over time and needs to be cleaned periodically. I mean, we've been using the Nomad almost every day for over a month now, and we still don't have a cleanup workflow that we're quite comfortable with. Great, so let's pull a shot so you can see how we use the Nomad. To start, fire up the kettle and set it to the desired temperature based on the coffee that you're brewing. Then weigh out some beans and grind. This stock basket can hold around 14 grams of coffee, so that's what we're going to be dosing today. We're also grinding a tad coarser than we would for a standard 58mm basket. Once you're done with this, if you are brewing a very light roast, you can add boiling hot water to the tank and pump it through to preheat the entire system, but we haven't found this to be necessary for most coffees. Then unlock and slide out the coffee tray. Make sure the basket is dry before adding in your coffee and then distributing. WDT for the win as always. And once you're done, give it a couple of taps to settle the grounds and then deliver a firm level tamp, after which you can reinsert the tray and lock it. Then add your hot water to the tank and close it. Just make sure that you have more than enough water for the shot that you plan to pull. We're doing a standard one to two with 14 grams in and 28 out in about 30 seconds. Great, it's time to start seesawing. Start at a moderate pace of around two to three pumps a second and if you've got your grind size right, at around 12 to 15 pumps, you should start to feel more resistance and the pressure go up. You can then wait a few seconds to pre-infuse and then resume seesawing to ramp up to six to nine bars. Here, we're gonna ramp up to nine bars and stay there until we feel the puck degrading and the lever resistance start to reduce, at which point we're gonna slowly ramp down to six bars and finish out the shot. You can then lift this latch to stop the shot. That's it you have a cremelicious shot of espresso. I mean, look at that, it looks delicious. Then on to the fun part, clean up. If you haven't overfilled the tank, then we recommend pumping out the remaining water. That way you'll have a nice dry puck. Slide out the tray, separate the basket from the holder, knock out the puck, and then give everything a good rinse. Also check the brew chamber and wipe out any coffee or grounds that you see hanging out there. Then put everything back together and it's ready for when you want to use it next. This was a standard ratio with a basic profile, but from here you can nerd out as much as you want. Try different pressure profiles, try the allonger and even spro overs. Just be careful not to go too crazy with the seesawing or you will most certainly make a big mess. Espresso brewing can be intimidating, but the Nomad's visual appearance and workflow somehow make it feel fun and approachable. What's really interesting is that it's very beginner friendly and yet will keep the most nerdy spro head engaged. So when it comes to recommendations, the audience is very broad. The crema valve makes it super easy for anyone to start playing with espresso brewing. So if you're a beginner looking to get your feet wet, 
then this is a good place to start. Then once you're ready to dive into the rabbit hole, all you'll need to do is upgrade your grinder and remove the crema valve. On the other hand, if you're already into espresso and you love the process of brewing manually, you'll love the Nomad. It somehow seems to cater to all skill levels. And last but certainly not least, if an injury or other physical condition prevent you from using direct lever machines, then the Nomad may be an option because it's way less physically demanding. So that's the Nomad, a super cool little machine that is capable of producing delicious espresso. It has its quirks, but is easily one of the most fun and versatile brewers we've used. And at around 250 US dollars, it punches way above its price. But now we'd like to hear from you. Did you know about the Nomad before watching this video? Have you used it? And do you have any other questions? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and brew aramse.